Hello everybody. Recently I showed you on my video how to make a 12 volt power supply out of an Xbox 360 power brick like this one. And uh, you guys really enjoyed that and I'm glad that you guys watched it. And uh, I was asked what can we do with this power supply? What should we power with it? Well one of the things I use my power supply for is uh, battery chargers. And then I was asked about a cheap battery charger and I do believe I found one. Uh, and by cheap, I mean under five bucks from eBay delivered to my door uh, from China, of course, but, uh, you know, still under five bucks. And this is the OSKJ um, DC to DC 300 watt, eight amp, constant current, constant voltage uh, buck converter or step down uh, buck converter. And it is a power module and it can be used for charging uh, lithium uh, ion uh, batteries as well as I believe lipo batteries because it's got constant current and constant voltage uh, capability and I've been testing it and it's been working great for me so uh, let's do a little background on uh, battery charging as far as lithium uh, cells go uh, you know they are definitely a peculiar uh, set of batteries to charge because they need to be charged in a certain way and if they're discharged too much or overcharged or not charged correctly, you will damage them or destroy them. But uh, this module for under five bucks will allow you to charge those uh, cells and uh, we'll test it out and see how it does. Here's the buck converter that I bought from China to do, use as a battery charger. And you may be asking yourself, why uh, is it important to have this circuit? Well, primarily it's important because lithium batteries need to be charged using constant current constant voltage and uh, it has to happen in a certain way and if you don't do it that way you will wreck the battery you will uh, damage the battery there's there's quite a large chance of that happening and I'll show you this on battery university uh, I'll put links to all this stuff in the video description below for uh, for everybody and uh, basically uh, if you want to know about batteries how to charge them how to do stuff definitely go to this webpage, Battery University. I'll put, the, again, the links to everything in the video description below for everybody. And read up on this stuff because I, I just haven't found a more uh, uh, straightforward explanation of batteries than I have at this uh, Battery University site. So yeah, um, basically what we need to do with lithium batteries is charge them with a constant voltage throughout the entire charge cycle and then with a decreasing uh, 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 current or amperage in, in the uh, uh, latter part of the charge cycle and you can see that on this chart here uh, for a, a lithium battery and it shows you that it goes up to a constant uh, uh, voltage uh, uh, I'm sorry uh, yes constant voltage here 4.2 and uh, after a while of charging when it reaches that 4.2 voltage then the battery current on the, the charger drops the battery current like this. There's a, a clearer picture of it down here. You can see more or less what happens. Constant current until the battery reaches 4.2 and then boom, the charge current drops off. Now, uh, I'm gonna be using this uh, cell, the NCR 18650B from Panasonic uh, as my primary testing 18650 cell. And uh, you'll see here on its data sheet that basically a similar sheet, you see a similar uh, chart. You see a constant current, and then you see the voltage raising all the way to 4.2, the maximum charging voltage. And once that happens, then the current on the, the, the charger uh, starts dissipating the, the current down till it turns to about 0 0.065 or 65 milliamps. And at that point, it disengages. So uh, again, I'll put links to all this stuff in the video description below for everybody. And uh, you know, basically this is why we need this kind of a charging circuit, a constant current, constant voltage uh, uh, converter. This is a, also a step down converter, which is a great thing if you're hooking up a 12 volt uh, 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 power supply like I am, and then taking the voltage down to uh, 4.2 volts. And uh, in, in the case of the NCR 18650B, they recommend charging it at 0.5C, which is half of the, its capacity which in the case of this battery would be uh, 1,625 milliamps. Um, I'm not sure whether they state it here or not. Uh, yes, right here, 1,625 milliamps. So 
basically this is why we need this kind of a circuit and at uh, four dollars and one cent from eBay I just can't you can't beat that for a charging circuit that does up to eight amps um, so once again go to charging go to uh, Battery University if you want to know all about these cells look at the charge methods discharge methods uh, all about uh, packaging safety you name it you know if you want to know about batteries this is where you go to find out about them uh, also one more interesting thing Battery University gets into is how to prolong lithium based batteries I'm doing th this charging at full uh, values in other words I'm taking the battery up to 4.2 volts and uh, at maximum charge which is uh, 1625 milliamps and then discharging fully down to 2.5 volts and that's a full charge cycle now if you do that every time with this cell you'll get three to five hundred charge cycles out of it which is okay but uh, if you take the charge cycles and, and, and discharge cycles and reduce them a bit you can get a lot more cycles, charge and cycle, cycles and uh, uh, discharge cycles out of them than you can if you do the full charging. Now this article here will show you what you need to do and uh, to get more charge cycles and as you can see here you know discharge cycles uh, basically when you take it down here's what I was saying 4.2 volts full, full charge cycle full 100 percent uh, stored energy will give you three to four hundred three to five hundred uh, charge cycles but take that value down to you know four point one zero and you get a six hundred to thousand charge cycles take it down to three point nine zero and you get twenty four to four thousand charge cycles but the downside being you only get sixty to sixty five percent of the capacity of the battery so again uh, you know lots to learn about there on batteries go to uh, you know Battery University, like I said, the links will be below in the video description. Um, you know, and if you need to find out about watts, amps, volts, and all this stuff, I'm going to put another link to this excellent uh, uh, tutorial here that shows you how, you know, basically explains uh, watts, amps, and volts uh, to you. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, for uh, somebody who's not really into electronics or you know, elect electrical devices, this will explain that for them. So let's get back to this. And uh, so basically this is why we need this type of a circuit and why I'm using it. And, and part of the purpose that I'm gonna be using it for is charging something like this NCR 18650B here, right? I have uh, several of these, but I'm using this one because we know the values that are required to charge it properly and discharge it properly. So uh, let's get on to the physical description on this battery, uh, sorry, on this uh, beautiful converter and uh, then let's test it out. Okay, we'll start with the weight on this unit. It is 63.4 grams. Uh, let me change the, uh, in ounces, 2.236 ounces. So uh, there's the weight on it. Uh, let's take a look at its physical attributes from here. It is 65.06 millimeters uh, in length or in inches that would be 2.5610 or 2 and 9 sixteenths and uh, width 46.97 and uh, in inches that is eight, uh, 1.8490 or uh, one and one oh ninth over one twenty eighth. So there, there's the imperial. And uh, in thickness, we got twenty two millimeters, twenty two point three six millimeters, or point eight zero point eight eight zero five uh, inches, or eleven. Uh, sorry, one one three one twenty eighth. So. There it is in, in, in its width. Uh, construction of this unit, pretty good, I would have to say. It looks pretty top quality. Uh, I, I don't see any sloppy soldering on it at all. All the pieces are put in nice and straight, nice and solid. Um, yeah, quite cool that way. Uh, let's look at the bottom half. Now the bottom part, this is my kind of a, a pet peeve with this. 
Um, well, not really. This is just a circuit. There's nothing covering this. So this is all exposed circuitry. You, if you put this down on, on a piece of metal, you would easily be able to short any of these contacts. So, uh, you know, try and protect that if, you, if you're putting it into any kind of a project. Make sure that you don't make any uh, metal to metal contact with these components on the bottom as you will short it. Um, yeah, so there's, there's all the components on it. Uh, pretty well laid out. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. All right, that's as close as I can get. And you can see that the soldering was done very well. Uh, there's not, there's not, you know, any sloppiness or spills or, you know, basically uh, amateur type soldering here. It looks very professional. So I'm impressed with the build quality. Um, on the on the top half, you have the, uh, first of all, the uh, block terminals here that are screw type terminals. And they allow you to input and output the uh, power and, and electricity into the unit. At the back, you have two potentiometers or two uh, variable resistors that are, uh, again, we've got the current on one and voltage on the other. And I will show you how to adjust that. That's, those are the two right there. A really nice coil. Um, yeah, everything looks really good on this thing. Uh, on the back, again, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the inputs. We've got two inputs uh, on basically on these two blocks. Here are the inputs, and this is the outputs, and they are labeled here on the actual circuit board itself, so that's cool. Um, and just so you know, the positives are on the further, uh, on the outer ed ends of the actual, um, block and the two center uh, inputs are the negative uh, inputs or outputs for either one of the in or the outs and you can see that there again so let's uh, get on to testing this thing actually let's get on to setting it so that we can test it wanted to point out that the current and voltage potentiometers or variable resistors right here are, uh, are adjusted with these little uh, brass screws at the top so I'll show you how to do that, but uh, that's how you uh, vary the current and the voltage on these uh, uh, on this unit. The top one here is the current, and the bottom one is the voltage. Uh, probably a good idea to to actually label that for yourself so that uh, you don't have to guess every time. That's what I did. So uh, just basically use a marker and and mark them down like I did. See, so see their current voltage, uh, so I, you know. And uh, then again. On this side, you need a standard uh, screwdriver, slotted screwdriver to uh, lift up the terminals. So counterclockwise on those screws will open up the uh, terminal blocks so that you can insert a wire into them. And we'll do that right now. I'm gonna use some XT60s on that. Um, connectors with wires. And these are 16 gauge uh, wires that I have that I'm using. And uh, for the input, I'm going to use basically a female XT60 like this. Uh, so we're going to put that in. And uh, as you can see, they are, they are labeled. So the input is the IN here. And uh, so let's just put those on. There we go. And just basically push them into the slots like so. And make sure you get the negative in the center. And I do. And the positive on the uh, outside. So that's for the input, and now it's going to screw down the terminals. Do the same on both. And do the same with the uh, input, and so the output from this uh, block on the other side. Being careful not to short anything or do this live. None of this happens live, of course. Uh, so we're going to plug in this one next. So again, the negative in the center and the positive on the outside again verifying that we got that correct and you can see that from the printing that it is and lock it down like so they're not going anywhere nice and snug now i've got two xt60 connectors connected to it it's uh, ready to be uh, powered up and tested yeah i want to show you a few things number one the there's an LED indicator on this. I didn't know. I didn't uh, actually uh, comment on yet. Right in the center here, that's the power LED or the uh, current LED. In other words, when the power is on, it's blue, showing that the uh, unit is powered up. 
and when you put a load on it or you're charging a battery it's going to go to red and it'll stay red until the battery is fully charged or the load is taken off so it does show you it does indicate whether the unit is actually doing something or just idly standing by which is really neat now uh, these potentiometers or uh, these variable resistors here are a little uh, uh, strange to deal with if you've never dealt with them before but uh, the screws are infinite, infinitely adjustable in either direction clockwise or counterclockwise they'll just turn and turn and turn and turn and turn and they won't stop so the way you know you've gotten them down to the lowest setting is that if you turn them to counterclockwise fully in other words uh, you keep turning counterclockwise until they click and when they click you know you're at the end of the setting and both of them do that when you're uh, turning them counterclockwise that way you know you're at the bottom setting or the lowest setting and then when you turn them clockwise uh, and you'll have to turn them about 30 to 33 times to from the from the lowest setting from the click at the uh, counterclockwise setting uh, if you turn them 33 times or 30 to 33 times clockwise they'll click again and that's how you know you're at the highest setting so right now I've got them down to their lowest setting they are clicked down at the lowest setting so next thing I'm gonna do is power this thing up with my 12 volt power supply my Xbox 360 power supply so we can begin to uh, test it and set it alright we've got uh, make sure we plug it in the right one this is your output okay and this is your input so I'm gonna plug in the input there we go and you see the blue light on with no load I'm gonna tighten those down a little bit cuz I feel they're a little loose there we go saw the wire jiggling around there alright so then the output is right here and we're gonna hook up my meter to that and get uh, our reading to see where we're at at the slowest setting which is you know the screws turned counterclockwise all the way and then you know it is a little idiosyncratic there's a little bit of a, uh, a weirdness to it but I'll show you what that is and it's easy to get past it's, it's, it's just you know just the way the circuit works I think so I'm gonna plug my meter in and you'll see right away the light turns red and the amperage is really high 3.19 amps now you think with the screws turned down all the way that they wouldn't be so high but it's very high right so I'm, I'm going to show you what ha what you need to do and what you need to do is turn the voltage screw about uh, a full turn and th that will settle the circuit down to zero so let's do that there's about half a turn and we're gonna go a full turn and there we go full turn Oh, still got nothing go another turn and you can see it's starting to drop there maybe okay so two turns and now we're at zero amps uh, okay so yeah you know like it's basically at this point and you can see the blue light is now on now you know now we know we've got it zeroed zero amps zero output right let's look at the voltage see where we're at with that and we're at 2.134 volts and that's stepping down a 12 volt power supply with 16.5 amps down to 2.1 volts uh, uh, 35 volts and uh, basically zero current at this point it goes back to current we'll see where it's zero or 0 0.01 amps um, so what I'm gonna do next is actually uh, increase my amperage see what we're get where we get to uh, I want to put it up to 1.625 amps which is uh, the maximum current that the NCR 18650B that I'm going to be charging is set to so we're going to take the C the uh, the, the current uh, pot and turn it up see what we get okay so uh, there's half a turn one turn two turns and you can see it's starting to increase three turns all right so four turns so well, that's not quite four turns there there's four turns and the value starting to go up five turns we're at 1.22 and I want 1.625 amps uh, let's see if I can change the range 
Nope. Uh, doesn't let me change the range. So we're at that DC amps at that rate. Let's go a little higher. Oop, too high. 1.26 is what I wanted. And I'll get a little finer on this adjustment by hooking up my other and meter afterwards. I'm just showing you how this works on, on a regular meter. And there we go. 1.2. Come on. I can do it. Six. There we go. So that should stay that at that setting because, you know, it is a constant current constant voltage uh, power supply so let's go to voltage now and you can see that LED change color there we go and we're at 1.1 1.7 volts so it even went lower when we turn up the uh, the when we change the amperage so you know it can go even lower so that's 12 volts uh, 1.67 amps and I'm going to turn this up to uh, 4.2 volts by adjusting the voltage and you can see how nice that is and it's it's like I said it's got great very very it's very variable it's very nice um, I'm really quite impressed with this little unit by the way and again I will put links to this in the video description below 4.20 is where we want to go and I you know generally don't suggest that you fully charge uh, lithium-ion batteries Go to Battery University, they'll tell you why you shouldn't because you get more life out of them, they'll last longer. You get more charge and discharge cycles at lower charge points. So let's go there, 4.20. So let's see where the amperage is at now. See if it stayed where I put it, 1.6, 1 1.26. There it is, 1.26 amps. And actually what I want is 1.6. 62 amps so uh, sort of dyslexia there so let's go take it up to 1.62 amps that is the maximum charge uh, uh, what they call 0.5 C on the NCR 18650B actually it's uh, 1625 milliamps is the most you should be uh, pulling, uh, uh, pumping into an NCR 18650B when you're charging it. Uh, that's one of these right here, the Panasonic's uh, 3400 milliamp cells, which is what I'm going to be using. So 1.62 amps, perfect, perfect, pretty well for this cell. And in voltage, voltage, 4.20, as you see there. So that's how you set it. Um, it's a little, like I said, a little counterintuitive in the sense that you have to turn the voltage up a, uh, a bit to get everything to stabilize, to get the uh, three point whatever amps that it <laughs> comes out with when you got the pots at the very bottom uh, to go down to zero. So there we go, 4.20. So that would be the maximum the battery would get uh, fully charged and amperage. Or current 1.62 amps so you can see how that stayed set exactly where I put it very nice right so next we're gonna hook it up to a, a my and meter and my battery and we're gonna use it as a charger all right we're ready to test the uh, charger uh, I've got my and meter hooked up to my battery holder here and uh, I'm gonna be using the 18650 uh, NCR 18650 B from Panasonic and uh, this is fully discharged. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so I've got 12 volts coming in and uh, into these into this converter. So I'll show you that. Go into volts. There we go. Volts. DC. So we'll sh I'll show you that. We've got 12, 11.78, almost 12 volts uh, coming out of it. We've got. 4.20 volts, which is the in complete uh, top charge for the 18650B. And uh, just so you see that the uh, this battery is fully discharged, well, as discharged as I'm going to do it right here, it is at 
two, I took it down to 2.5. It's recovered a little bit since then. So, you know, as most cells will recover. Uh, so it's a discharge NCR 18650B from Panasonic. Uh, and we're going to charge it fully. But, uh, oh yeah, and one more thing to check here would be the amps. Well, how much amps do I have coming out of there currently? How many amps? And you do that by shorting the output with the ammeter. There we go. 1.62 amps, exactly what uh, the, the half C charge on that cell is going to be. So let's plug it in to my charger, to my uh, battery holder here. So, and you can see that 2.7, 2.83 volts there on the actual ammeter showing there. Um, and uh, we don't need the meter here anymore. Uh, and I will time lapse it to make sure that uh, we see how long this all takes and uh, what the, the uh, measurements on that are going to be like. So let's do that. There we go. And move it over a little bit like so, so we can see it all. There we go. And then I'm going to hit start and then start on the uh, charge circuit. So now it's on. You can see it charging. And 1.62 amps, 3.14 volts almost instantly. Uh, and our time is going here. And I will time lapse this. So uh, at this point, um, we'll pick it up at the end when it's done charging. Here's the uh, time lapse of this uh, charge cycle with this uh, uh, converter. You can see the time ticking away and the numbers on the ammeter uh, notching up. And eventually that battery will become full around 2 hours 32 minutes. I'll bring it up here and I'll show you it turning from uh, blue to sorry, from red to blue. And then the results from my Turnergy charger at the same time. And it took two hours and 40 minutes to charge this cell using the Turnergy and about the same using that uh, buck converter uh, charger. And uh, here are the values. Uh, right around three hours, no more energy goes into this battery. As you can see, the numbers just don't change. And I took this out, I uh, left it connected, charging all the way till uh, for about six hours to see if there'd be any difference. And here's those numbers and you can see that the numbers have not changed. It stops charging. It doesn't trickle charge. It just says, okay, I'm done. And this is very healthy for the lithium cell as it should not be trickle charged past the point of uh, full charge. What I'm showing here is the result of a charge test that I did on that same cell, the Panasonic NCR 18650B. And on the left, you'll see that the, uh, the Turnergy results, that's when I used the Turnergy to fully charge it and then fully discharge it. And on the right, you'll see what the OSKJ fully charged the cell and then I discharged it using the, the Turnergy again uh, to get the result. And you can see that there's a 24 milliamp difference between the two cells, which is not very much. Basically, it's a standard uh, variance, I would say, or deviation. I would say that the OSKJ uh, buck converter charge circuit put exactly or pretty well exactly the same amount of energy into that cell uh, give or take 1%. I would say that's an excellent result on that uh, charging unit or a charging circuit. And, uh, you know, again, very impressed with that. And I have no problem using that to charge up 18650 cells or recommending it uh, to charge up 1860 cells. Again, you must set it correctly for it to work. But as you can see from these results, they're basically identical. So the $40 charger and the $4 charger are both providing the same result. All right, here's a different setup. Uh, I've got my MPT uh, solar charge controller 7210A uh, pumping 12 volts uh, into the uh, step-down controller charging circuit, uh, the OSKJ, at 4.2 uh, volts. Now, because this unit is a step-down uh, voltage controller, uh, it, it can actually take a variable input. So you could use a solar panel easily to uh, input into this uh, charger or this step-down uh, controller and output whatever you needed to charge a battery. So you could easily use it as part of a solar charging system. And 
uh, part of the reason I've got this all set up like this is, is basically to show you the values of what happens when we crank it up. Now, this is my one of my SPIM uh, 08HP cells. These things are great, 8 amp hour uh, uh, batteries. I got them from Alarm Hookup, and I will put links to that in the video description below. Uh, love these batteries. Uh, as an anecdotal story, yesterday I used this battery pack to boost my car when my battery uh, died. Uh, you know, hot Texas summers seem to kill batteries almost as quick as cold uh, Canadian winters. Uh, but uh, regardless, it wouldn't start. I hooked this up, turned it over, and started right up. So those, those, these are excellent 8 amp hour cells. They can do up to 200 amps uh, in, in output. So that makes them very powerful. Again, in the video description for all this stuff, it'll be in the video description below. So I've got 4.20 volts coming in. You can see 12 volts uh, regulated over here. And I'm gonna turn the circuit on here just by connecting it to my, my cell. And then boom, you'll see that it starts charging and the, the uh, LED goes uh, red. Let me zoom in on this so you get some better numbers, nicer image of what's going on. And now you can see that the, the, the cell is at 3.66 uh, volts, 1.62 amp hours. Now, half a C on this uh, cell would be uh, 4 amps. So I'm going to crank that up and see how the uh, charge uh, buck converter handles it. So let's, let's just crank the, volt, the uh, current up, see what happens. Now we're at 2. Continue on. three almost four okay we're at four that's half a c or half the capacity uh, of this spim 08 hp cell so uh you know it's giving us four amps out of it no problem uh at 12 volts and uh, let's see what happens what's happening with the temperature here we're at 36 c and 33C on either uh, 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 cooling uh, veins or the, the heat sinks. So 37 now, no, 36 on the 37 on the top uh, heat sink, 31 on the lower heat sink. So the, the top one, this one here is getting warmer than this one. Uh, ambient temperature here is 27. I'm going to take uh, that and put it into. Uh, Fahrenheit 81 so let's see where we're at with the top uh, heat sink 99 Fahrenheit and 89 Fahrenheit on the lower one so not bad uh, the instructions say you shouldn't take it if, 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 the, if the heat sinks go up a, uh, above 65 C you should put a fan on it well we're not there yet so let's see let's go back to C Celsius 39, 34. So not bad. You know, it's not overheating. It's it's perfectly, uh, you know, doing its job. It's a little warm, but just barely warm to the touch. So at this point, uh, let's crank it up even more, see what happens. Up to five. We'll stop at six when we get there. Yeah, let's turn it up slowly till we get to six. So yeah, already impressive six amps uh, charging circuit for under five dollars. I mean, you just amazing. Um, there we go. We'll say close enough, and you can see what's happening over here too. That the amperage on the on the uh, twelve volts into it is is, is changing as well. So six point zero three amps. Uh, you know, if I take off the circuit. You can see that it, that it's set to 4.21 right now. I don't want it that high. I want 4.20. Let me see if I can adjust that. Okay. 4.20 there. I plug it back in. Yeah, it's 4.2, 4.19 is fine with me. Yeah. Plug it in, and we've got six amps. Let's see where our, our uh, heat sinks are at. Not too bad, not burning my finger or anything. Celsius 34 on the bottom one, or 95 Fahrenheit. 40, 40 on the top one, or 104 Fahrenheit. 
uh, current room temperature 81 or 27C. So, perfectly okay. See if that's changing. Nope, still more or less 40. Let's try that again. Make sure we're on it. Okay, there we go. Now we got a little higher, I think. Nope. Okay, there. I got 48 from it somewhere. 49. Okay. So that is 119 Fahrenheit. And uh, probably right off. Yeah, right off the heat sink. And uh, the b bottom one is 107 Fahrenheit or 42. So, you know, still within specifications. It hasn't gone over 65 yet. Let's see if we can get it cranked even higher. Well, there's seven. Going to eight. Hmm, it seems to be stalling there on eight. That's, that's about all I can put into it. Uh, 7.77. It does not seem to want to give me any more. So, uh, right now, the most I can give it is 7.68. Uh, let's see what our temperatures are. Fifty-one C, or one hundred twenty-four, which is still within acceptable limits. On the top heat sink, one hundred four uh, Fahrenheit, or forty C on the on the lower heat sink. Looks like the top one gets hotter. Still pretty warm. Getting hot. I wouldn't want to keep my fingers on that for too long. Okay, 56C now at, so 133 Fahrenheit and 129 on the lower one, I believe. Let's try that again. 33C or 92 on the lower one. So, yeah. Yeah, it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So, as you can see, it can pump out almost 8 uh, amps there uh, into this battery. I'm going to try a different load other than the battery. I don't want to, I'm already pushing this cell uh, by hitting it with eight amps of charging power. Uh, I'm going to hook this up to a different uh, configuration and see if I can get more amps out of it. Though at 7.58 amps, 7.6 uh, amps, it's pretty well doing exactly what it's supposed to do. So uh, much higher than that, I think you'd want to put a fan on it because it's getting pretty warm. Okay, and the don't try this at home experiment. I'm going to dead short this uh, circuit and see what kind of amperage we get out of it th uh, there. So let's do that. That's a dead short. So we've got all the output shorted. So basically now the wires are going to become heaters. 9.61 amps. Whew. That's pretty high. Let's see what we're getting for a temperature. Ooh, 67. And 39 on the lower one, but the top one, 68. That's higher than they say it should be running without a heat sink. So that's 154 C, uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, on the bottom, we've got 100 and, uh, gee, 116 Fahrenheit or 47. So the top one's getting much hotter than uh, it should be. Ooh, 74. That's more than enough. Okay. Um, one more look at that amperage, 9.61 amps. I would say if you're going to be running it that hot, uh, definitely put a fan on top of this to cool it down because it's getting pretty warm. Um, 66 now, but it was hotter than that. So, yes, very powerful, very robust little circuit. Obviously, you can take a lot of torture. It just took that. I don't need to push it past or beyond that point. I don't have a fan on it to cool it down. If I did, uh, we'd probably see uh, higher amperage possible out of it, but I don't need any more than that. So at four, uh, under $5 for, for this on from uh, uh, China and eBay, look at the video description below. I'm very happy with its results. Uh, if you guys want to see me test it in any other way or other configuration, which I haven't right here, um, tell me so and I'll uh, give it a shot 
Um, hopefully, I've covered everything that you need to see on this thing. If you're looking for a cheap lithium ion uh, constant voltage, constant uh, current charging circuit, the OSKJ is awesome. I will put a link to this in the video description below and you guys can buy it uh, from eBay if you wish. I realize that some people with solar uh, charging systems may be interested in this little unit for charging their cells and uh, of course you're going to want to know can it handle a lower voltage and what low voltage can it handle because you know solar cell systems are variable in power uh, the panels don't always provide a steady voltage obviously uh, as the sun goes behind a cloud or it gets darker or brighter the voltage varies so let's see if this charge controller can handle that right now I've got it set to 4.2 volts let's crank that up and uh, you can see I've got 11.8 volts going into it right at this mo moment at 4.03 amps so it's charging and it's set to 4.2 volts so let's see if we take it down what happens let's take this down to 11 volts there we go so still providing the 4.04 amps so let's go down lower let's try 9 volts still working so it can handle a variable at least down to 9 let's go down to 8 8 volts excellent so yeah if you had a solar panel on this you could be pumping 8 volts into this thing and charging a, a, a a normal lithium cell to 4.20 volts at 4.05 amps you know depending on the size of the cell of course the, the uh, solar cell let's take it down 7 volts still going okay uh, this is really interesting 6 volts still going amazing let's go all the way down well not all the way down but 5 volts and just so you can see if we turn it off, it reverses. It tries to reverse. It's trying to put energy back into this thing. Let's go back on. And at 4.9 volts, it's still working. Um, let's keep going. 5 volts, so let's go down to 4. I doubt it's going to keep working here. I, I just don't see it. And no, it's not. I mean, it's 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 supplying 0.88 amp hour. So you know what? It is actually still trying to do its job. Now, this is not a step up uh, converter, so it it shouldn't actually be able to go higher than four volts. Let's see what happens here if I cut it off. Yeah, I'm at 3.87 volts. So obviously, this is inaccurate. Let's see what it, our meter says on that currently what we have actually coming out of that little voltage controller again in the video description below 3.93 according to that so very close um, but even at that voltage if I turn it on and try and charge the cell it's still trying at 0.87 amps so you could have this hooked up to a solar panel and have the voltage very quite widely because the input obviously can go down to four volts and uh, all the way up to uh, 32 is what I had it they say 40 in the specifications so yeah quite a, a, a decent little charging system on that uh, buck converter so yeah there you go for you guys with the solar panels that want to use one of these to charge cells that's it for my video on the OSKJ step down buck converter this little beauty right here um, i'm really impressed with this uh, little converter uh, it works great as a charger constant voltage constant current charger as you saw in my many tests uh, i have no problem using this as a uh, charger for let's say uh, a basic solar system or just you know to charge a, a lithium uh, cell or battery uh, you know to your specified levels uh, it certainly worked great for me um, no problem recommending this and I'll put a link to it in the video description below for everybody so that uh, 
you guys can get it from the same source that I got it from. I will also put the Amazon source in, in case you wish to buy it from Amazon instead of eBay. It'll be quicker. Uh, but, I mean, it's just amazing. Now, I'm thinking about this thing and I, I'm thinking, wow, I could buy 10 of these for under 40 bucks or for $40 or under $50, I should say, and hook individually a 10S battery pack with 10 individual uh charging circuits on each cell just incredible so uh, amazing value very happy with this thing if you uh, guys have any other questions on how you want this tested or something you wish me to do with this little uh, gem uh, definitely uh, leave me a, a comment in the video description below and uh, i will look at it and i will respond i usually do uh, again uh, thanks a lot for watching on on this video uh, if you like this video and it helped you out in some way, do me a big favor and click on the like button here in the bottom right hand corner and give me a thumbs up. That helps my channel, it helps my video and I greatly appreciate it. Also, over here on this corner of the uh, screen you should see a picture of me. Just click on that picture and you'll be subscribed to my channel. As part of that process now you have a bell icon and clicking the bell icon will get you notified every time I put a new video up on my channel. Once again, and like always, thank you very much for watching and for your time.